this is my video of my CPS 150 power supply from Soundcraft. Um, these power supplies are, um, Soundcraft is a British company and these power supplies are to power their mixing boards. Um, there's a lot of information online about these mixing boards. Um, so you can find a lot of information online about them. Um, uh, Soundcraft mixing boards. My Soundcraft is a 16 channel. And you can buy these mixing boards. I got this one. It's a Studio Spirit 16 channel. It's got four group channels. Um, and then it's got uh, 16 preamps. And I got it for $300 with the power supply. But it has problems, so the first step I'm taking is with the power supply. So I've replaced the capa capacitors. And it says you can replace those two large capacitor with larger capacity capacitors, which I have done. And then those two square things are bridge rectifiers and they're on 18 gauge wire. 14 gauge, uh, 18, 14 gauge wire, I believe. Um, and then I had to drill it out to get it to go onto the circuit board. So there's four pieces of 18 gauge wire under all those two bridge rectifiers, these things right here, these square things. So um, those tend to overheat. And so they've been replaced with new bridge rectifiers and you can get really highly rated, like high rated uh, bridge rectifiers, like 800 volt or and stuff like that. and they should work well and uh, you can go online and check out do a google search for soundcraft mods power supplies and it'll tell you what kind of uh, capacitors these are the two large capacitors i've replaced these two and this smaller one those are new capacitors those have been replaced and then you can see here there is a larger i think it's a two watt resistor that i've replaced right there so yeah, all is going well. It's kind of a nail biter whenever you work on a power supply, but the first thing you got to do is, of course, unplug and turn off everything and then um, drain the caps. So, you know, put a voltmeter across the capacitors and see if they're holding any uh, voltage. And then you got to drain them with a, you know, a large fireproof resistor or the screwdriver method or whatever you want to do. So anyways, I've powered it up and it seems nice and it's powering up the board. Um, the, it should be reading 17 volts positive, 17 volts negative, and 48 volts. And it's a little bit off. It's like 17.2 and, you know, 17.01 or something. And... Uh, 47 point something so it's pretty close and uh, I've let it run for a long time and you know there doesn't seem to be any overheating issues um, those gray I would recommend um, if you're gonna post those bridge rectifiers on wire put it on 16 gauge because that'll fit better into the circuit board and you can also put a fan in. what I plan on doing is I plan on um, adding a fan, a 12 volt fan, somewhere in the future. But you can also, yeah, um, that's I think the best solution. So, and then after that, I'm going to start doing, here it is right here, here's the mixing board. And I'm going to start to do all the, um, you can pull off each channel and uh, replace the capacitors on each channel. So anyways, if anybody's interested in these old mixing boards, they do sound pretty nice. And, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's not terrible. You know what I mean? Uh, spend $20, $20 on the compa components and you can, you know, get that power supply working nicely. If you have a larger power, uh, mixing board than 16 channels, 
then you might want to ditch this power supply because apparently these aren't any good for powering over 16 channels. So anyways, maybe I'll do another video when I pull one of the channels um, of the mixing board and I'll show you how I recap recapped it. Um, uh, cheers. Bye.